Another full intro here to run us through it all is Liam Halligan with On The Money. The UK faces profound economic challenges. They were the words used by Rishi Sunak as he stood outside Downing Street for the first time as Prime Minister. The former Chancellor certainly got his work cut out and he's the youngest Prime Minister in over 200 years. He was born only in 1980. In his entree is the cost of living, inflation. And there it is, the graph showing that inflation's gone from under 2% to 10.1% in little more than a year or two. 10.1% in infl September 2022. That's how much higher the cost of living was than a year earlier. That 10.1% inflation rate, that's a 40-year high. But even that headline number belies the underlying reality in the shopping baskets of many of us as we go around our supermarket and corner shop. Look at these statistics from the Office for National Statistics that came out this morning. In September 2021, a litre of vegetable oil was £1.56. Last month, it was £2.58. That's a 65% rise. Take pasta. That's an ingredient often used by families when they want to save money. It's cheap, it's nutritious, and it's easy to store. In September 21, a 500 gram bag of pasta was 38 pence on average, said the ONS. Last month, it was 61 pence. That's a 60% rise. And look at tea. The UK is built on cups of tea. And yet, 125 grams of tea was 67 pence in September 2021. Last month, it was 97 pence. That's 45% higher. And then there's milk, our very life blood. £1.17 for four pints of milk in September 2021. Last month, at £1.52. That's a 30% rise. But it's not just food, it's also borrowing costs, particularly for mortgage holders. You can see from the graph here that even in early January, mortgages were around 3.5, 3.6% on average. They rose steadily all the way to 5.5% on average by September. That was before the mini budget. The financial turmoil associated with former Chancellor Kwateng's policies has increased the average mortgage now to around 6%. But there's some good news on the horizon. Since Rishi Sunak came in, government borrowing costs have fallen. The so-called 10-year guilt yield. That's the price that the government must pay to borrow money for a decade per year. On Friday, when it still looked as if there'd be a fractious Tory leadership contest, that 10-year guilt yield, which ripples out across the economy, affecting mortgages and other personal loans, was 4.1%. Today, with the prime ministerial ship done and dusted for now, it's down at 3.7%. So if you're looking to remortgage or take out a new mortgage, just wait a little bit, because for now at least, it looks as if government borrowing costs and associated mortgage costs are coming down. The big financial conundrum for Rishi Sunak, though, is the wholesale price of gas. Why? Because that energy price cap, the only real thing that survived from the mini budget, apart from the national insurance reduction, that cost a huge amount of money to deliver. And the bill to government depends on the wholesale price of gas. But look at this. We're not hearing about it very often, but it's hugely important. Wholesale gas prices, they're now down to below 100 euros per megawatt hour on European markets, down from 350 euros. That's roughly where they were back in February before the war in Ukraine. Now, this could change, of course, because if there's more flashpoints in that east-west war between Russia and the West, wholesale gas prices could spike up again. But for now, at least, they're falling. They're still quite high by historic standards. But it's good news for the government and the government finances that the wholesale price of gas is coming down. In sum, Rishi Sunak faces a formidable inbox, inflation, higher borrowing costs, roller coaster energy prices. He says he's not daunted, but to that list we could add public sector strikes, given that many trade unions are pushing for inflation busting pay rises of 10 percent or more, something that's unlikely in the private sector. Rishi Sunak wasn't even alive in the 1970s, but it seems to me the problems he faces, the profound economic challenges, like inflation, like possible strikes, and like high energy prices, they're seeming to resemble more and more the 1970s. 
that most politically explosive of decades.